Yes. Hey everybody, welcome back. Last time we hung out together, uh, we sat down, we made a very basic me uh, with the, pure, the simplest of ingredients. Today we're gonna take it up a notch. Today we're making Viking blood me. Stay tuned. So again, welcome back. Now, Viking blood mead. Mead always starts with honey, so we've got honey here. And when we look at our ingredients on the honey container, it says, ingredients, honey. That's it. Don't get anything else, just go with straight up honey. Uh, no preservatives, anything like that. Uh, now we also have, what we're also gonna be doing is we've got uh, the dark, we're using dark sweet cherries. I was trying to find tart cherries, I couldn't find them. We're gonna try it with uh, the sweet cherries. So this is kind of an experiment. I've not done this before. We're gonna find out, see how it comes out. I'm also gonna be adding in uh, a couple cloves. And we'll be making some tea here. Be using a black currant tea and adding that in as well. First thing we have to do though, as with everything, we've got to sterilize everything. If you don't need to go overboard with it, I've got a spray bottle to sterilize with. Uh, I'll also be, I've got a bucket of uh, sanitizer right here. So I use uh, star sand uh, with hot water in there. So let me get everything sterilized. And then we're going to get started. So I'm starting off with frozen uh, cherries here. That will allow the cell membranes to open up uh, first. It will bust those cell membranes and allow more of the juice and sugars and stuff to get out into the meat itself. Now we want to go ahead and we're going to warm these up for about 15 minutes on the stove. And then we'll get into our other ingredients. So as we did last time, we're going to warm up some water. We're going to wait for this to come down to about 95 degrees. And then we're going to rehydrate our yeast. So I'm using the Lavlin EC1118 yeast, as I did before. And as soon as that gets down to about 95 degrees, we're going to go ahead and toss it into the water there and rehydrate it, let it sit for about 10, 15 minutes. In the meantime, we also do have our tea steeping right now. So we've got our black currant tea in there that's going to add additional tannins and stuff uh, and we're going to pitch that in there as well. While we've got that going on we've also filled up the sink with hot water and we're letting the honey sit in the hot water so this way here it's going to make it a lot easier to pour when we get ready to put it into the bucket. So as these are warming up we're going to go ahead and mash them up and break them up start releasing things out. Doesn't need to be perfect. They're not frozen now. And start getting some good juice out of them. Okay, rehydrating your yeast. So if you look on the back of the packet there, it will tell you how much water to use. I use that as a rough guideline, but more importantly is what temperature to reactivate the yeast at. So on the Lavlin, Lavlin, EC1118, uh, you can see as it states between 95 and 98 degrees. So we're right about there. So we're going to go and put our yeast in the water just to rehydrate it. And then we our get everything Our temperature has gotten down to where we need it to be. So we're going to go ahead and put in, we're actually only going to do half of the packet, roughly half, um, because we don't need to use a whole packet. If we were making five gallons, I'd use the whole packet but where we're only making a gallon because this is an experiment i've not done this one before i'm going to use about half a packet here and the rest of it we're going to just fold this over and we'll tape it up and put it back in the fridge there we go We can use this next time. Here's the stir. 
And we're going to let that go about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, according to the instructions on the packet. And in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and get our water set up. So now since we'll be using a cup of tea, we want to discount that out of the water that we'll be putting in. So to do that, I have another cup, just like it. Hey! Fill that one up. Same level that we have with the tea. Set that aside, we won't need it. We'll use that to water the plants with. Go ahead and add our water. to get the honey out of the sink. All right, now with our honey, take this off. This, and we're going to put in our tea first. Set this out of the way, we don't need this. And we're going to toss in two cloves. Two. So I've got a five pound thing of honey here. However, since we're making one gallon of mead, uh, at that point we only want to use three pounds of honey. So to do that, we're going to get our scale out. Set this on our scale. Put it on. We're going to zero out the scale, then we'll add in the honey until it hits three pounds. We've got to zero it out. And since we warmed it up, it pours out very nicely. about three pounds. This over here. Cap it. So we'll use this for our next batch, which you want to stay around for. Our next batch that we're making after this will be Dragon's Breath Mead. That will be fun. I'll be in the next video. Okay, so what makes it Viking Blood Mead? are actually the cherries. So we've already cooked these up here. Uh, we need to add this in as well. And let's get our spatula here. This is also why we use a two gallon bucket, even though we're only making a gallon of mead. affect our weight differently. So we're going to want to take a hydrometer reading of this. And again, everything has already been sterilized. We're going to go ahead and suck this up right here. And we'll be able to 
put this right back in here. Because everything's already been sterilized. And when we put the, this is a hydrometer, it will tell us what the weight is or roughly what uh, alcohol content we should get out of our meat. But when you put it in, there's some bubbles and they'll attach to the side of it. So as we put it in, we want to go ahead and give it a spin. And that will help to knock any bubbles off of it. So we can get a truer reading. According here, we should, it's saying 18, 19%. Because of our uh, yeast that we're using, we should probably expect closer to about a 15%. So this will have a little bit of sweetness afterwards. And we'll go ahead and put this back in to our sanitation bucket. We're going to use this for our next batch also, which is when we're going to be making uh, dragon breath meat. That looks really interesting, and I want to give that a try and see how that comes out as well. So we're going to wait a few minutes, wait for the yeast to finish rehydrating, pitch it in here. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and uh, put our lid on. Uh, our vacuum seal here, our airlock, has got uh, star sand water in it. So I took some of the water from our sanitation bucket, put it in here. That's going to kill anything that tries to climb through there. Uh, and it won't be able to get into our must. Okay, so our yeast is about ready now. We're going to go ahead and somebody else had mentioned about adding in some of the must into here to uh, activate it. Um, but everybody else that I've seen, they're just going ahead and pitching it right on in. So we're going to go ahead and why they call it pitching, I don't know. I'm going to kind of do it as gently as I can. And then pull out our handy dandy spatula. Now, I also want to get as much oxygen into this as possible. Well, oxygen in now, not later. So I'm going to agitate this as much as I can. Without spilling it. Because my wife gets mad. And they come home, make a mess all over the place. She comes in not expecting it. It's one thing when she expects it, but she's out right now. But she came in and found a mess. She'd be ticked. I don't like her. I would be too. I'm get some good oxygen in there. mess. Maybe put out some country music, some Willie Nelson. Waylon Jennings. All right then. The cherries. People said, hey, you need to use a uh, chemical nutrient to put in there with the yeast. But from everything I'm reading, and they were saying it's been proven that raisins don't work and stuff like that. You know, the way that I've been making it, it's been working for me. It comes out nice, I enjoy it. People that I give the meat to, they enjoy it. So in this case here, the cherries should provide 
the needed, the needed nutrients for the yeast to continue. And we're going to just cover this lightly. And we're going to give it a couple minutes to start activating. I actually want to see it start activating here. And then we're going to close it down tight. All right. There we go. A Viking blood meat. We've got an airlock in. As you can see, the air pressure has already started coming up, pushing it down here as the gas is trying to escape and going to be bubbling up through there. We're going to go ahead and get started on our next batch. We're going to be making a Dragon Breaths Mead. Uh, that one that I'm really looking forward to trying out. Uh, again, both of these are new. I've not done one of these types of meads, either one of these meads before. Uh, so we're experimenting on the half gallon. Uh, if you like the video, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up below. Click the subscribe button and you'll get notified when you come into YouTube that I put out new videos, especially where we're, I'll be posting out the videos to follow up on how these came out. You'll want to find out uh, how that comes out. So click on the subscribe button and you'll be notified when you come into YouTube. And if you click on the mysterious bell icon that's somewhere around here, uh, you'll get an email notification when I come out with the next uh, videos. So uh, we've got some, uh, click the subscribe button. I've got a button right here. And some other videos over here. And if you like them, again, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Thanks for hanging out with me.